Hi, do you know that one of the key features of API 6 is that you can extend its functionalities using plugins? And API 6 allows you to build your own custom plugins to add extra features and manage API traffic more efficiently. Oftentimes, you use Lua programming language to implement uh, new plugins and leverage plugin runners for different programming languages to develop the plugins in your favorite programming language. However, API 6 is the best support for Lua. After writing a couple of plugins for API 6 in Lua, I understood that you don't need to know the fundamentals of Lua programming or to be an expert in this language at all when your ChatGPT friend is always with you. For example, with my background in Java and C Sharp, I can understand the code and the logic written in Lua and I believe that you can do the, the same. My name is Babur and I am a developer advocate for Apache API 6. In this video, I will guide you through the process of developing new custom plugin called File Proxy for API 6 using Lua and ChatGPT. We are going to use ChatGPT to write some Lua code. And this function and plugin will expose static file in your API so that you can also access the file at the specified URL. Before jumping into the actual plugin implementation, let's understand first why we need this plugin. And at the time of creating this video, API 6 might not provide the built-in plugin for a similar case. That's why we are going to build our new one. Often we want to, for example, expose a static files like YAML, JSON, JavaScript, CSS, and image files and so on through the APIs. For example, API 6 API Gateway can act as a front door in your application to route incoming requests to the multiple endpoints. It's also a right place to define all server URLs, passes or parameters, descriptions of each API endpoint with their inputs and outputs. And you build uh, open API specifications to document the API and this openapi.yaml file is, will be like a map that guides your API users in understanding and interacting with your API. By providing a pass of openapi.yaml file where it's stored in our API Gateway server, uh, to the plugin we can uh, fetch, serve the file direct, directly through the, your API Gateway, providing consistent interface for API consumers. Then your API users can access a YAML file as the specified URL, let's say example.com slash openapi.yaml. There are many use cases, other use cases to use this file proxy plugin. You might think of using this uh, proxy plugin for simple content delivery network, CDN. Or if you have a small scale application and you don't want to use fully uh, powered CDN, you can use a file proxy plugin to serve static files from specific location. And this file proxy plugin can be used also as a caching layer for your files. Let's say if you have a files that are expensive to fetch or generate, you can use this plugin to fetch only the once this file and then serve the cached version of this file for the subsequent uh, requests. Let's get started with this plugin implementation. We are going to run API 6 locally first and our API Gateway will be hosted on localhost 90 and 80. When uh, the development is ready, you can deploy it to your server or any cloud provider, right? We want to place a file openapi yaml to localhost 9080 slash openapi.yaml pass in our API Gateway. So you will learn how to achieve this. For this demo, we are going to leverage existing file proxy project on GitHub. It has a quite similar structure to the existing API 6 Docker example repo on official API 6 uh, GitHub repository. We only removed some unnecessary files to keep, keep the demo simple. The project has three folders, Docker Compose uh, YAML and sample OpenAPI YAML files, for example. Let's say docker compose yaml file defines two containers, one for API 6, another for etcd, which is a configuration storage for API 6. And under customs, custom plugins folder, you can find the actual implementation of file proxy plugin. 
and we review this uh, plugin file in the following sections. And also openapi.yaml file is just an example of openapi specification we want to expose in the API gateway. We start by asking ChatGPT and it gives us a quite almost close to the real implementation but the answer is too, too abstract. When you uh, follow the process, you will end up with non-working plugin. However, it helps us to extract useful Lua code. If you know the real process of developing uh, new plugins, it will be easier to combine uh, both knowledge and practice. Let's break down these steps. First, as ChatGPT uh, suggests us, we're going to create a Lua file, right? We create a new empty Lua file under slash custom plugins folder or directory. This directory name can be any directory name you know or you can give. And uh, as you can see, I have file proxy file inside this custom plugins folder. The, and the name of the file also should be the name of our plugin. For example, in my case, uh, file proxy.lua, actual file name, and also plugin name file proxy. And next uh, step, I need to register this plugin in API 6 because API 6 needs to know where this plugin file is located and is able to run this plugin accordingly. Right? To do so, we should first define the file path where API 6 finds uh, file proxy.lua by adding the file path to the extra Lua path attribute of API 6. It is in the config.yaml file. Now, you may ask why the file path set to slash op slash Lua, because we run API 6 using Docker. In the runtime, we want to copy this Lua file into the Docker, so that's why the file path is different. And the next step, we uh, write, uh, uh, we write some Lua code. Now let's break down this file proxy Lua code step by step. Up to now, we only registered the plugin, right? And we just simply does nothing now. It's time to implement the functionality. The plugin logic is implemented as a set of Lua functions. You can check how it is done in my file proxy Lua example. And uh, now, if to understand the structure of this code, you can simply ask the GPT to explain this Lua code. Wow, actually we got a quite good explanation of the code because it was partially written by ChatGPT. Now I will only walk you through the important parts of this code so that you are not lost or fully rely on AI to write your own plugins. Right? Let's uh, break down uh, the steps which is common to create uh, the plugins. So we'll start first understanding the plugin file structure. So if you open again this file proxy Lua file, you have the following the sections. First, number one is models. You because you need to import all the necessary models, libraries you, need, you want to use for this plugin. And the next section is plugin name. Every plugin has a unique name. It can be also the same as our Lua file name. Because don't forget about the file uh, proxy, uh, our plugin name. The next section is a plugin schema. Because every plugin has a plugin schema where we usually specify inputs to the plugin. The input will we will pass from the API 6 route configuration, which you can see the later when we test the plugin. For the file proxy plugin, the plugin needs to file pass to read the file and return the response. So our parameter is gonna be pass, which is a string type. You understand the schema like a method declaration with parameters as an input in other programming languages, right? And uh, let's say next section is a plugin definition. It's a really important part of the plugin implementation that we define as a table with the properties uh, like a version, priority, name, and schema. The name and schema are the plugin's name and schema defined it earlier. And the version and priority are used to, uh, by API 6 to manage this plugin. The version, let's say, typically refers to the version that's currently in use, like API versioning or any software versioning. If you publish and update your plugin logic, it's uh, going to be one-on-one. -on -one. 
You can set any version you wish, but you need to be so careful in choosing priority because the priority field defines in which order or phase your plugin should be executed. For example, if you have a plugin X with a priority of 3000, will be executed before the another Y plugin which has a less priority. Because uh, when you are developing the plugin, you need to uh, choose plugin order or the priority uh, if uh, this plugin should come first or next. The next section, uh, number five, is schema check function. This is a Lua function, is used to validate the plugins uh, and the actually inputs to the plugins from route configuration. You will see it soon in the test section and it does this validation of the input. The, the next the number six section is plugin logic. It's an access function, it's our core function where we can write our major plugin logic. And uh, it, it can be called uh, during the process or accessing of our plugins. In our case, for file proxy, we need to open the file specified in the plugin configuration and in the logic and it should read it is content and return this content as a response. So the logic is going to be also the same. If the file cannot be opened or something goes wrong, we can always log the error or return 404 file not found status. It's exact place we can give this work to ChatGPT to write this logic. Here, let's use, you can see how ChatGPT responded. And now uh, we can just uh, pass this code to the file code implementation and we are good to go. The next number seven is logging logic, one of the last section because uh, monitoring observability is always important. It's always good to log the plugin configuration so that we can debug, check if the plugin is working as we expected. We can also log requests to the plugin, also responses. Once we learned how to develop our custom file proxy plugin and we registered in API 6, now it's time to test the plugin. You can easily install this demo project on GitHub by running Docker Compose app from the project root folder and your project will be up and running. And next you create a route with a file proxy plugin enabled to test if this file proxy function the plugin functioning correctly. So uh, we're gonna pass the, this uh, route configuration to terminal and uh, press and hit enter. As you can see, everything is working as we expected. And we can also ask ChatGPT to explain us the previous route configuration. As you can see, when I ask to explain this code, it's actually explained step by step, like how we are the creating the route using admin api and how we are accessing this admin api using security api key and so on and forth and also we are enabling our file proxy plugin that we are created uh, recently right and then we are also specifying exactly where our uh, open.yaml file is located which is a pass server and when our route is requested. To test the plugin, you can send a curl request to the route or open the link uh, slash openapi.yaml in your browser and the response should be the content of the file openapi.yaml at our specified URL, which is great. We, we, uh, we receive it, uh, the content of the file and the plugin working as we expected. Up to now, we can say we learned how to develop custom plugins for API 6 with Lua because it is a powerful way to extend the functionality of the API gateway. And we demonstrated how to create a file proxy plugin. In this video, we define the plugin definition, schema, validate the plugin configuration, and implement the custom logic and during the access and log phases of the API 6 request pipelines. And ChatGPT helped us to write the Lua code for the main functionality by filling our lacking knowledge of these programming languages. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Happy coding.